Hello, everyone, and welcome to Plain Talk. I'm your host, AJ Rivera, and today I'm joined by Alabama Secretary of State John Merrill. Secretary Merrill, thank you for sitting down with me. AJ, I'm delighted to be with you. Uh, as Secretary of State, you serve as Alabama's chief election official. What does this mean, and what are some of your responsibilities? Well, Look, the office of the Secretary of State of Alabama is the oldest office in the Secretary of State. Alabama had a Secretary of State before we were a state. In 1818, Henry Hitchcock was appointed by our fifth president, James Monroe, to serve as Alabama's first Secretary of State. Now, he served ably in 1818 and 1819, but since that time, we've had 48 individuals who served as Alabama's 53 Secretaries of State, 153rd. Secretary of State. Our code and constitution give more than 1,000 assigned duties and responsibilities to the person that holds this position. Now those include, but are not limited to, the things that people know the most about. They are elections, which includes election administration, voter registration, campaign finance reform, campaign finance review, voter participation, all the things related to the elections process. Then business and corporations, licensing, trademark, you start a new business in our state, you go through our office before you can hire somebody or pay one cent of tax. And last but not least, international adoptions. So that's just a few of the highlights of the things that we're responsible for. So you talk about being in charge of the election and you know we are just a few weeks away from the general election on November 3rd. Uh, where can Alabama voters go to register to vote? Well, great question, and it's really, really easy. The easiest way to do it is downloading the mobile app on your phone at Vote for Alabama or visiting our website at alabamavotes.gov. And as long as you have a valid Alabama driver's license, you can join the 1,677,937 new voters that we've had since January the 19th, 2015. Well, what is the deadline to register by? And the last day to register before the November 3rd general election is October the 19th. So just 13 days from today, but there's no reason to delay. Go ahead and send your registration information in. So on the ballot this year, there are three, the three largest races are the presidency, uh, the senatorial and the House of Representatives elections. On the sample ballot that your office has produced, the presidential candidates include Donald Trump, Joe Biden and Joe Jorgensen. In the Senate, voters can choose between Tommy Tuberville and Doug Jones. As for the House of Representatives, Auburn and Lee County is a part of Alabama Congressional District 3, meaning residents will vote between Mike Rogers and Adia Winfrey on who the representative will be for the next two years. Additionally, on the ballot this year, voters will see six new proposed amendments to the Alabama Constitution. Can you explain a little bit more about what each of these amendments are and what they do? Well, those are six statewide amendments, and those amendments are best explained by visiting our website at alabamavotes.gov, and a brief narrative accompanies each statement. So it allows the voter to infer what they wish to from the way that the actual amendment has been written. We do that to make sure that people have their questions answered before they go to the polls, so they'll be better prepared to cast their ballot, not just for the candidate of their choice, but also in this instance, for the constitutional amendment that will be presented to them. With the ongoing pandemic of COVID-19, many people have been outspoken about mail-in ballots being used across the country. Nine states, including California, New Jersey, and Vermont, along with Washington, D.C., are mailing ballots to every registered voter prior to the election. The other 41 states, including Alabama, have chosen to stick exclusively with absentee voting. Can you tell us what are the differences between a mail-in ballot and an absentee ballot? Well, A.J., there's a significant difference between universal vote by mail, or as the president calls it, unsolicited voting by mail, and absentee voting by mail. In a state that has universal vote by mail, you will find that each and every resident in that state that's listed as a registered voter will receive a ballot whether they want one or not. Now, there's five states that currently have universal vote by mail and have had it for some time. Hawaii, Utah, Oregon, Washington, and Colorado. The three states that do it best are Oregon, Washington, and Colorado. Now, 
the people that do elections in those states will tell you that for you to initiate the process of universal vote by mail, you need to have your ballots being returned by mail at a 60% rate before you ever initiate. Alabama is at 4%. So we're still at 56% before we should even begin the conversation. Secondarily, those people will tell you that in order to fully implement a vote by mail effort successfully, you need to have five years for full implementation, not five months, like some of these people, the four states you just added are trying to do, but five years. Last but not least, I've not heard anybody talk about this except me, and I was interviewed just like you're interviewing me now by Anderson Cooper on CNN about three weeks ago, and he was asking me some questions, and I introduced this to him. In Alabama, for us to administer one election segment, is five and a half million dollars. For a full cycle of elections, which would be the primary, the runoff, and the general, those three segments, it's 16 and a half million dollars. For one segment of a universal vote by mail effort is 18 and a half million dollars. So the difference is 60 million for universal vote by mail in Alabama, or 16 and a half million the way that we currently do it. Now, even a career bureaucrat in Montgomery or Washington can think of a better way to waste $44 million than that. Now, the other thing that you need to know is in a state that has voting by mail through the absentee process like Alabama, in order to vote by mail or to vote absentee in person, you have to make application. You can print off the application at alabamavotes.gov. There's a fillable PDF, or you can print out a blank form and fill it out. It must be turned into the absentee election manager by mail or in person with a copy of your ballot photo ID. Then they'll give you a ballot. You vote the ballot, place it in the secrecy envelope, place it in the affidavit envelope, which is the one that swears that you're who you say you are, get it witnessed properly. If you mail it in, you'll put it in the third envelope, address to the absentee election manager and send it in. And then your vote will be opened on November 3rd and it'll count for the candidate of your choice. All the things we do in Alabama related to the elections are designed to make it easy to vote and hard to cheat. So obviously Alabama and the rest of the nation is facing COVID-19 right now. For those that, cho that choose to vote in person, uh, what is Alabama doing to ensure their safety at the polls? Well, all 1,980 polling sites will be open in Alabama on election day. And if you want to vote in person, the thing that you'll note is when you walk in, all of our poll workers will be wearing face masks. They'll all have latex or non-latex gloves. There'll be sanitized wipes everywhere, disinfectant spray everywhere, and hand sanitizer to be used by all who wish to use it. Now, we want all of our polling environments to be clean and we want all of our people to be comfortable. So those practices that are recognized as best practices by the Center for Disease Control and Dr. Scott Harris, our state health officer, will be in place. We encourage you to practice social distancing and the other things that are involved. So what is your expectation for voter turnout this year? Great question. I think we'll be somewhere between 68 and 75% which is between 2.5 and 2.8 million voters going to the polls, which would be the largest voter turnout for any election in the history of the state of Alabama. Uh, is there anything else that you would like to tell the voters of Alabama? Nothing that I can think of, but I appreciate you reaching out to me, AJ. And if you have other questions, please let me know. Of course, Secretary Merrill, uh, thank you for sitting down with me and answering uh, the questions that we have for the voters of Alabama. Uh, you're always welcome on Eagle Eye TV. Uh, as for everyone that is sitting at home, make sure to register to vote. And after casting your ballot on November 3rd, turn into Eagle Eye TV for all your election coverage. You can find us on social media at Eagle Eye TV or on our website at Eagle Eye Auburn. I'm AJ Rivera and War Eagle.